podcast was brought to you by CINE.nl and it was also brought to you by Utrecht International Comedy Festival. If you want to see the video, which was recorded at Studio Pandora, you can find it on YouTube. Will you please listen up to what I have to say? Because we're in for some old fashioned wrestling today. Not the violent and oily opposer. Wrestling time. Yes, it's some wrestling time. So we will discuss pros and cons, falls and pluses of all your favorite movies. And we will ponder the merits of cinema in this WrestleMania. Cause it's some wrestling time. Yes, it's some wrestling time. Yes, it's some wrestling time. Yes, it's some wrestling time. Hello, pot people! Wow! That is from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You are listening to a new episode of Thumb Wrestling, the podcast in which two opinions about one certain movie will melt together into a puddle of chat. Is that weird? It probably is, I don't care. This is episode THX 113. Eight, episode 113, basically. I'm, I just put in movie titles to, yeah, to sure. entertain myself. Fact check Norris. Fact check Norris here. Actually, it isn't. It's episode 115. Fact check Norris out. We are recording this at the big binge of comedy at the utrecht international comedy festival uh, on the 4th of march in tivoli vredeburg utrecht yeah and um i want to welcome you to this special episode of thumb wrestling in which i will speak to my podcast huge davies welcome welcome by special do you mean is being watched in an art gallery it is now being watched in an art gallery I, I, and that makes it even weirder to be doing this if you like if you're listening to this and you're not like i don't know how you normally do the podcast i've never been on a podcast in which we're in a podcast studio so we're just talking there's yeah. a sound engineer here he's cool yeah at the same time well, there's like a glass screen, and then there's like people in an art exhibition looking at paintings. Yeah. And they couldn't be less pleased to hear a podcast about two, about, about this. But there's people are sitting down. I mean, yeah. I guess. They're starting to pay attention about yeah. a podcast that they don't have a clue what it's going to be yeah, about. No. I'm going to explain oh, a bit. Have you, have you seen my act? Oh, so <laughs> this guy just came to see me. Okay, yeah. cool. Did you like it? <laughs> okay, cool. This is the, honestly, this is, this is quite strange. This is great interaction yeah, yeah, with, great. With, with people who the uh, listeners at home or yeah. in the car or whatever will not be able to realize the yeah. So I'll introduce you a bit. You are a musical comedian. Yeah, sadly, yeah. Yeah, and you won. Uh, you were uh, the 2019 winner of the best newcomer. At the people keep saying the winner, but I didn't win it. You didn't win <laughs> I it. I lost the award. Wow. People, this is the second interview I've done where people are like congratulations for winning the award. I'm like, I lost. Uh, <laughs> I lost to someone who now is a Netflix special. So okay. thanks for bringing that up. Well, you are the creator of a Channel Four series. Yeah, it's true. The artists. Yeah. And, of course, you are the scorekeeper in the Film Quiz podcast, yeah. hosted by Nick Helm. Hosted by Nick Helm. I've actually made a sitcom. So, if yeah. there's anyone to talk about what's good cinema and what's not good cinema, it's me. Yeah. Somebody who had the series cancelled in the first season. <laughs> 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 yeah. Do you know what criticism is, so you are more able to dish it out? Oh, yeah. Like, I know what it's like to have someone ring you and be like, your, your sitcom's being cancelled. So, mm. I know when I say something's bad... I mean it with I'd say it <laughs> I say it when I actually mean it's bad I don't I don't I also host the uh, YouTube show in which I watched me and my friend watched the 100 worst rated films on Rotten Tomatoes so okay. like, I know what a bad film is I watched I watched 2% films on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> on like the best of days What's the last one you watched um we watched a film called Darkness it was um what was it it was like it was who was it? It was it was Kevin Bacon and his son is possessed, right? Uh, but I think it's it's like very stra. It's like it doesn't make any sense. There's like a, I think a dog uh, for some reason like a dog like just gets <laughs> in the house and starts like ripping everyone apart. But it doesn't mean it doesn't the plot. The thing about if you if you've never seen a two percent movie in Rotten Tomatoes, you go in with it. You're thinking like, oh wow, this is going to be like so much like wow, yeah, like it's going to be amazing. But then you actually watch a two percent film and you're like. Oh no! Like 
this is even entertaining it's bad. not even it's like it's past the like it's the the, the acting is bad yeah. you know whenever you watch a bad film yeah. you're like you normally the comedy is like oh I didn't like I didn't like that because of the acting and yeah. that normally will be like that's a bad film but you've got something else to grab onto you've got at least yeah. a story there you've got music you've got like CGI you've got like even in a 2% film yeah. you will have there'll be no plot there'll be no good acting mm -hmm. there'll be like terrible comedy there'll be like awful CGI everything about the bad direction bad lighting the whole film will be so dark you can't even see it just so like it's just unwatchable just awkwardness yeah. all around yeah yeah it's like a terrible idea <laughs> like even the premise will be bad you won't even like the, the, the opening premise will be like Oh, this there's like I've got like too many. I've got like too much wood. I don't know. I've in stepped into house. a two percent. I have stepped into a three percent. Yeah, movie yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, and that was Battlefield Earth. The oh Dungeon yeah, Volta yeah, for movie. sure, for sure, for that sure. Was, Battlefield that was Earth, definitely yeah. a load of awkwardness. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch it alone or with like people? <laughs> with friends, we were expecting to get a few laughs out of it, and in the end, we did. But it took a long time. If you're interested in watching a film that's really bad but really funny. Uh, but there's a film called Mac and Me. Do you know what mm -hmm. Mac and Me is? If for people who don't know Mac and Me, Paul Mac Rudd's favorite movie. Yeah, right. You can yeah, if you know Paul Rudd, you know Mac and Me. But yeah. you watch the whole film; it's amazing. Mac and Me is an ET. It's like an ET ripoff, but the whole film is it's like a remake of ET, but it's paid for by McDonald's. Yeah, and that's why it's called Mac and Me. <laughs> and like the the climax of the movie is they have a they go to a birthday party in McDonald's. Oh, it's wow. absolutely insane. The whole movie is like I cried. Honestly, I cried laughing yeah. watching it. With Nick Helm, we actually watched it with Nick Helm. Oh, cool! On the episode, and we were like all crying for laughter. If you watch Mac and Me, yeah, you're guaranteed you'll cry laughing, like I at least five times. I can hear his laughter yeah, with yeah. it. it. It's good. It's probably infectious. And he's seen it twice. You know, <laughs> he's a weird guy. He's a weird guy. Next weird guy. But that's not the movie we're going to talk about now. No. We are going to talk about the Blues Brothers, yeah. the 1980s movie from 1980, not even 1980s, to the year 1980, mm. directed by John Landis, uh, starring John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd yeah. as uh, Jake and Elwood Blues. And um, just a small recap of the plot in case you haven't seen it in a while. Um, after a Joliet stint, uh, Jake gets taken to visit the penguin, uh, the, the uh, nun who raised them by Elwood, who tells him that their orphanage is going bust. And then after that, Curtis, their old custodian, sends him to a church to get maybe a bit more wisdom, where Jake sort of sees the light. He thinks, I'm going to put the band back together, we're going to raise some money, and we're going to save the orphanage. Then, of course, they bring the band back together with some difficulty. They get instruments and play a gig, actually steal a gig, uh, while getting in trouble with the police, with Nazis, with rednecks, a former fiancé who's turned into a homicidal maniac. And in the end, they have a big gig at the Palace Hotel ball Ballroom where they get an advance on a record deal so they can save the orphanage. And after a big police chase, they hand over the money, save the day, but they do land in jail where they play Jailhouse Rock. End of movie. Good yeah. recap? I think that's a good recap. I mean, I don't remember the film. <laughs> uh, Three, two, one, fight. But obviously, if you see a bad film, obviously your brain immediately deletes the film <laughs> uh, from your head. As I And I would know that because yeah. I've seen so many bad films and deleted mm -hmm. all of them. No, I, I... When I saw this movie for the first time... I actually had to watch this film for an article I was writing, mm -hmm. and I'd heard so much about the Blues Brothers. It's like it's like a part of like cinematic history. Like it's like it's like a special film for a lot of people, and I'd never seen it. And I was looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I watched it, and I could not believe how bad it was. I was devastated. What? What? Why did you hate it? Um, I thought that. So I will say that there are good bits. Yeah. In the movie, I'm not going to say it's like a, a terrible film. I, it's more that this film was so disappointing rather okay. than it was bad. Like it's not a bad film, mm -hmm. but I was just so disappointed because everyone was like, "You got to check out this movie." And I checked yeah. it out, and I was like, and "I you, don't want to check out this movie." And you're sure you didn't watch Blues Brothers 2000 by accident? Maybe I did. What happens? <laughs> what happens in the other, other film? What happens in 2000? There, they find out. Uh, Elwood finds out Jake has died. He gets some other bad numbers, brings a band back together for no oh, really no, good reason, no, and they go to uh, New Orleans to. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. To do a gig. Who's what celebrities turn up in that one? 
Who, get, sorry? Any celebrities turn up in that film? Because Oh, yeah, plenty. Paul Schaefer, who was supposed to be in the original one, but he was canned from the band. He did turn up in the sequel. Okay, fine. Uh, they have B.B. King, and okay. they have yeah, lo- loads and loads of uh, famous blues mu- musicians. So the, the, so the first thing, right, there's loads of celebrities in this film. Yeah. Really good celebrities, too. Not just yeah. celebrities, famous musicians incredible yeah cap calloway james brown uh shaka Khan has a, has a minor role yeah we get yeah aretha franklin ray charles uh twiggy is even in there she's not an artist of course but a, a famous model yeah there's lots of there's so there's lots of so the music the music is good i'll yeah. say that the music is good mm-hmm. i like the music but the bits in between the music are unbearable they've got frank oz who's mm-hmm. a, who, who is <laughs> frank oz is in the film yeah. he's a prison guard yeah, yeah. He said he is. No, he's no, bringing absolutely nothing to the film. <laughs> you got Frank Oz in the film, and you make him be a prison guard. Didn't do anything. Then there's Twiggy. You mentioned Twiggy. Twiggy yeah. is just gets chatted up at a gas station. Mm-hmm. You're like, okay, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Steven Spielberg's in it as well. Steven Spielberg. He works at the bank. Yeah. What does Steven Spielberg do at the bank? Absolutely nothing. Uh, at, at the at City Hall. Oh yeah, city yeah, city hall, right? He's there to to collect the money for the the back payment of taxes that they. And owe. why on earth is Steven Spielberg in a film? F- I don't want to see. This is 1980. 1980. I, I don't want to see Spielberg. S- wasn't Steven Spielberg f- from now? Steven Spielberg. But why? When why put him in the film? Because um, John Landis had been in his movie. I think it was 1941, which came out a year before, and they were sort of in a, so in, a, a in a contest who can do the most expensive movie. Oh, okay. And 19. 19- 41 had cost I think 35 million and this one was 30 million but they were they were sort of friends and also adversaries uh, sort of okay, rivals fine. what do you know about the, the the George Lucas Steven Spielberg bet I think I do but yeah so uh, this basically they they, they 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 had a gentleman's bet yeah the the person who earned um um I think it was like they earned who the person who the most from their film being released that year would yeah. receive one percent of that film's total gross profit yeah and just so happened that year that george lucas was making star wars episode four yeah. and he got one percent of the profit and apparently he's like like he like it's a, he's still like paying yeah. <laughs> steven spielberg it's like a hundred million dollars like he's earned from th- or something th- crazy yeah. like that it's i like think crazy. it was even a freeway bet in which one of the three has received no money and the other yeah. two are still raking it in yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> something like that i wish i had a i wish i could bet yeah like that <laughs> but well they were talented guys together yeah but Do- also unproven talented guys how should we put our podcast together? <laughs> Whoever gets the most money from the podcast has to pay the other person 1% of the other po- person's <laughs> podcast profits. I would go in for that because yeah, yeah. I think you'll probably win. Okay, cool. We'll be paying you like £2.50 per year. <laughs> uh, or what's the worst? Two it's more euro, than I get now. €2.50 a year. So sorry. I, didn't, I, I forgot where I was. We still have to... Uh, yeah. t- uh, talking about that, I went t- to... Um, to uh, London earlier this year, yeah. and when we came back, we had a five pound note left in our uh, wallet. Oh yeah. Would you like to exchange it for five euros? What tonight? On my yeah. last night? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Is it? Wait. Is the? Is it? Is, the, is everything? Is the drinks free from now? <laughs> for me? Because I'm a special boy. If you're gonna hang out near in this the, fridge, the, then yes. Yeah. They okay. Are. Cool. Yeah. Well, then I won't have the. I'll, you. I won't have five euros then. <laughs> But if you if you keep that five pounds though, mm-hmm. it'd be nice for you to have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, once actually uh, Britain has started to win Brexit and it is actually yeah. Once we take money. over, you'll need that. Yeah. <laughs> once we start um, taking all your resources, because <laughs> we have no resources. Um, no offense, sorry, no no hard feelings by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good. Yeah. There's no crying in thumb wrestling. You just didn't like all the story bits in between didn't the, like the music. Sto- all the stuff in between was nonsense. The 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 bits, also the the comedy bits. Yeah, they last too long. The joke is too played out. Mm-hmm. There's like there's loads of good ideas in the in the movie. Actually, like if you if you told me about the movie and all the ideas you'd have, I'd be like, this is my perfect movie. Mm-hmm. If you were like, there's like a really over the top car chase. Yeah, and and they and then I'd be like, cool. But then you watch it and it's like. It's so long. It drags on and on and on. And this thing, like you're just watching it, and you're like, "Please bring in something new into the into the scene." It just keeps going on. Car, ch- and then it, you're just like, "It's not fun." Like the joke finished t- 
10 minutes ago and i was sitting my i was sitting watching there i was like it must be it must be over it must be over and maybe the the it's like i didn't get it like it's like it's meant to be so long that you lose your mind mm -hmm. but i was like it can't it can't be but it, maybe it's also a thing of being like that was funny at the time because no one had ever done that before well i do think that it wasn't it, it, these, these were sort of golden days for making comedy movies because they could get a huge budget to make a comedy movie. You you wouldn't get that now. You would just have enough budget to so get is, a couple of comedians together in a room to have them improvise. So is the joke that they spent so much money on this scene and they kind of wasted it because it was so bad? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. But... Uh, there is an element of the, actually John Landers. He okay. is trying to make a proper movie with proper car chases in it, with funny bits in it. But the bits are not funny enough. So I'm I've timed how long the car chase scene is. Okay, it's over twenty minutes long. <laughs> you, it's you, 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 even a good car chase, yeah. even Mad Max, you'd be like, if the scene is over twenty minutes long, they don't even do the. Then, you can't, you at least can't. you get a switch to another kind of car chase. Yeah, yeah. So you're like, there's like a bit yeah. in between. The whole, yeah. I mean, the whole film is a car chase. Yeah. But like this car chase, it's over 20 minutes long. Like I could like, I couldn't handle it. Is it the one through the streets of uh, yeah, Chicago? I think there's well, beneath the, the train. It's the it's the incredibly long one. I'll, yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> if you've watched the Blues Brothers, you know what I mean. There's also like there's also like sort of okay. Let me just because I've I've got notes for this because I haven't. <laughs> watch the, or the it's also just like the, also like the plot and the dialogue are just very slow as well yeah there's like a scene where there's like they get pulled over by a policeman right you watch the cars slowing down yeah the police walk to the car they check their licenses and then walk back to the car there's like zero dialogue it's not even funny mm -hmm. <laughs> i just don't it took three it take i tried i timed it it took three minutes Three. That's like three minutes. You know that scene in in Shaun of the Dead where there's like um, where like it cuts between like Shaun yeah. and he like goes to the country and he sort of wakes up on the train and it's like he gets to the country. It's like a quick cut of all those things. That, 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 that like takes ten seconds. That That's was true. Like, in a movie made twenty seven years later, it was and after MTV culture, but, it was that short. Yeah. yeah, but I I I how can you sit in a how can you watch a film and watch someone like what like read a license and then go back to the car and like li like nothing's happened and if, i was like sitting there and being like this is like a i was like honestly this, i was like this is a waste of my time i would say that it's they're not just trying to build comic tension they're also just trying to build real tension if i have to defend it which i'm going to do now okay cool so i would say that they also try to set up regular scenes as as trying to build up tension in a way, it, it's very reminiscent of seventies movies. But I don't think the the, the, the movie needs tension. <laughs> I would say that it's <laughs> you the want, comedy you film. You just want jokes. Well, it's a comedy. Like this is a co let's be clear. This is a very com this is a comedy film mm -hmm. with lots of funny bits. It's meant to be funny and good music. Yeah. At no point does there need to be tension. I'm not taking any at any point seriously in this film. The orphanage is mm -hmm. going to go like they're not going to get the money for the orphanage. You you know that they're, they're going to get the money for the orphanage. I, I rewatched some of the, the some of the the sketches they did as the Blues Brothers for uh, SNL, and it's yeah. not even sketches. It's mostly them just doing a song. Well, that's another point. So that just feels like they're two comedians who, th yeah. who think. If we try to do it, do it as ourselves, people aren't going to like it. But if we do it as the Blues Brothers, then it's a thing here, and people yeah. will enjoy it. So it's like a bluff to to do what they want. This is the this is the main problem. I don't like SNL, and this felt like an <laughs> SNL sketch that went on for too long. Like I was like, I can see it. Like I I even thought I didn't know anything about them, but I was thinking I was like, this feels like this could be like an hour shorter than it needs to be and it's like oh that exists and it's called snl <laughs> and i was like okay that's that's why because i there's a lot of snl films that they do they, the characters and they just do spin-offs yeah of the film i can't think of any right now it's like Pete, wayne's water yeah wayne's, wayne's, wayne's well that's yeah. I, I like that better to be fair yeah but no the blues brothers i couldn't i can handle and also it's it's more i don't think it's like a bad film there's lots of good things i like it i think carrie fish is really good in it mm -hmm. there's a scene where they're like beating him with a stick and then they and they stop and they get out a bigger stick and they start being. I thought it was very funny. Yeah, I thought it was really funny, <laughs> but I was like, "There's not. I can't. I can't live off Carrie Fisher and <laughs> the stick joke." Would, would you want to it. live off Carrie Fisher? Yeah, I would like to live with Carrie Fisher. <laughs> if she was in the movie for the whole thing, I would 100 yeah. think it was a different film. But she, unfortunately, she was only in it for like a bit.
A thing that struck me this time is that you get basically three women who have a slightly larger part than just dancing in the background. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. cool. Yeah, it was cool. So you have Aretha Franklin, you have Carrie Fisher, and who's the third woman? I'm not even sure anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, they all sort of get the short end of the stick in this movie. Well, yeah, the. You said mention Aretha Franklin. She's yeah. in it. She's like she gets a good part. She didn't get a good part. Her, I wouldn't her even say she has a good part. Okay, no. fine. Her yeah. husband. So Aretha Franklin's in it. You're like, okay, yeah. great. I'm going to see. Her. Well, she, her she, she gets to cook on one of her songs, and that is good. But the way it's used in the film is a bit weird. The husband tells her that women belong in the kitchen. He throws the apron on the floor and storms out. Yeah, and joins the Blues Brothers. Like, yeah. get, don't get him to join the. Get her to join the Blues Brothers. I was a bit like. Yeah. I think at the time it was like... You would think if she, if she does a song like Think in that way that she wins the argument automatically. I, I just, sorry, I just forgot that there were like 15 people in an art exhibition yeah. watching us. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. It's weird. I just like... Um, and also I don't think that like, there's two people watching us and then there's like everyone else is about like having drinks. Yeah. Like it's the like in a fucking Iron Man film. Yeah. Where everyone's <laughs> like, a, like a rich person convention and they're just... <laughs> yeah, just the very... I've never done anything like this. It feels like... I've never been more aware that I'm in a podcast. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and you do the film quiz podcast in front of an audience. Well, we do that in front of an audience, yeah, but they, they've come to watch the yeah. podcast. None of, none of these people have come to watch they the podcast. They didn't even know there was going to they be a podcast. They didn't know there was going to be a podcast. A lot of these people like the Blues Brothers, I reckon. So, do you like the Blues Brothers? Who likes the Blues Brothers? Ha hands up for who likes the Blues Brothers. The one person. <laughs> maybe I'm... Maybe I'm um, maybe who doesn't I'm, like the Blues Brothers? Yeah, uh, most people I don't have an opinion about this, so I we are what, boring them. With I think the what we've learned is that no one cares about what we're talking about, <laughs> and yet they're still watching us. Yeah, I was just saying in Utrecht, man, the people here are sad. <laughs> I said, I said in my in the gig I just did, I went, I I I do a, I did a bit, and I was like, there's a sad ending or a happy ending. What do you want? And the whole crowd remained silent, and like three people went, we want the sad ending, and they said it in like a way in which they were like, on the way, like they were on the way out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, this is the comedy festival of the year, and people can't even get enthused about the. They were like, the way they said they wanted the sad ending was the same way that you, the same look a, a dog gets in his eye when you put it down behind the bike shed. It's so sad. It's, sad. it's a sad place. Sad place. Sorry, guys. Who was at the gig? To, yeah. Did you, you guys say the sad gig? ending? Do you guys want the sad ending, the happy ending? You didn't say anything. No, okay, there we are. <laughs> it didn't say anything. Just wanted it to end. <laughs> Just wanted it to end. If you uh, could choose a happy ending or a sad ending for the Blues Brothers. Sad ending. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think this was a sad ending or a happy ending? What, happens, the, what happens at the end? I've completely... What they they the pay the money for the orphanage, so the yeah. orphanage is saved, but yeah. immediately they get arrested and they get sent to Joliet with the entire band and they play Jailhouse Rock. I mean, I mean, sure. I mean, <laughs> it's sort of a happy if, ending. It feels like they're home. It feels like an excuse to play Jailhouse Rock. To be yeah. honest, it feels like they 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 wrote the film and they were like, we we managed to acquire Jailhouse Rock. <laughs> Let's work backwards. <laughs> How can we get them sent to jail? Yeah, by by well, yeah. Uh, by starting up and starting it off in jail and then yeah 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 just... yeah. I didn't like the film. <laughs> I think it's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it! I th what, what else didn't I like? Because I've written... I, I wrote an article about this, yeah. this movie. Um, what else did I not like about it? Um... So I'll go, I go back to the things I did like. All right, I liked the... There was... There was like a nonsensical plot. I like that. Over mm -hmm. the top chase. Ray Charles is in it. James Brown. Fantastic. They're doing their songs as well. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just, it just goes on for so long. <laughs> like it just, I don't understand how you can enjoy it. I, li I literally don't understand how you can enjoy the film. I do like it because you don't often get to see comedy movies like this, uh, well, not especially that, that now funny. where it, where the movie making is actually pretty good, where they have thought about uh, where to put a camera, uh, how it's edited. It's sort of propulsive in ways. I like the scene in the church because it's edited a bit like a music video. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that it's bad. 
Like, I think that's good. I just think it's not funny. Like, at no point was I like, this is very, very funny. Actually, when I was a child and I saw it for the first time, I didn't, didn't well, when your think brain wasn't that fully that... developed, oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, it's that's like, true. I watched the Tweenies I also, yeah. when I was a kid, and I loved the Tweenies. <laughs> the Tweenies were the best. But it was the first time that I saw it. Loads of people who now like the Blues Brothers first saw it then, and they still are coasting off their nostalgia, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, loads of people who rewatch it when they're older think, "Oh, I was thinking that it would be funnier." But um, well, I think it's worse if you watch something that people have nostalgia for and you've not actually seen the original thing in the first place. And mm -hmm. you're like, there's not even a sense of nostalgia. I mean, I watched things for nostalgia. I've stopped watching things for nostalgia. You know, they they mm -hmm. the, the new Transformer movie. They're doing like a Beast Wars kind of a thing where yeah. they, they've got like animals. And I was like, "Oh, I used to love that Beast Wars show." Yeah. I'd love to like rewatch that, and then I put a Beast Wars episode on. I got it uploaded, and I was like, "This is unwatchable. Like yeah. it's ugly. Like it hurts my eyes. The animation is so bad." I was like, <laughs> "I could make a better animation. I've no experience in animation." Yeah, like this is horrible. Like they transform, and I'm like, "This is um, this is nightmare fuel. I'm gonna have a nightmare." It looks like one of those animations in the Lawnmower Man. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah hmm. I know what you mean. Hmm. So just I, w I would say like just leave your childhood where it was. <laughs> yeah. 10 years, 20 years ago, don't revisit the past. You get these festivals with like uh, Back to the 90s and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I, I do like the fact that I like that music in the 90s. Yeah. But I have no wish for revisiting it now. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's fair enough. I think that's that's sort of the way you feel about it. Do you it. actually like um, the Blues Brothers or do you. I'm not pretending. I re yeah, watched you, it yesterday. Are you, are you, I you watched the longer it? version and yeah. I, I dug it. You dug it? Okay. Yeah, not because I, I was expecting it to be funny all around, but because it's I, I thought it's a well-made movie and I enjoy that. Okay. I thought it was a badly made movie. I didn't <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> uh, what, what, uh, how, how do you like those bits with Henry Gibson, who plays uh, an Illinois Nazi? I completely forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I quite like the sound of that. But I, th I think I was watching it and I was, I was slowly losing concentration. Yeah. And because I had to, I also wasn't watching it for fun. I was watching no. it for an article. Yeah. So I was like, this is like work. But like you, I, I, I yeah, had to but do you some thought at, in, uh, beforehand that you were going to enjoy it and then you didn't. So yeah, that oh, makes yeah. it worse. Yeah, it got worse and worse. And then I started to like lose. Focus. Now it's actually starting to feel like work. Yeah, it was, now it was feeling like work and I was like looking at the clock being like, and then yeah. I was checking the timestamp below and being like, how quickly before it finishes. Yeah. But it was, but, it, yeah. but it's like a thing. Like every, fe every like half an hour, there's like Ray Charles comes on, you're like, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then I was like, no, it's a letdown. And then Aretha Franklin comes it's all a letdown. Mm -hmm. I'm d it's hard to describe, because I should have probably rewatched the movie before this, but I had actually time to rewatch the movie, yeah. but I was like, I actually don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. That's, the, that's a mark of how much I dislike this film. <laughs> but at some point, the movie starts going way more into cartoonish scenes. Yeah. And I'll, I'll describe one with the Nazis, how that plot yeah. gets sort of resolved if you can call it that yeah uh but how it sort of ends with a sort of punchline they are being chased by the nazis through the streets of illinois on their way to the uh, city hall it's classic nazis man yeah exactly and at some point they manage to um get away from them by having their car leap ba over backwards in a somersault over the nazi yeah. car while it speeds off a, yeah. a, a road that's high up like a turnpike yeah. and then that's that hasn't been finished yeah and then the na the nazi car i uh, like a red uh normal car it drops down towards yeah the ground but it's filmed from way back so you see yeah. it's like it's being dropped from an airplane yeah and you see it in the distance just going ooh, like a brick going down and in the end it just goes through the asphalt pff, yeah and then a car comes and drives into the hole just on top of the yeah car. so my Okay, so your explanation of that was slow, yeah. But it's even slower in the film. Yeah, I would say, yeah, like it's so, it's so <laughs> slow. Maybe it's also but it's very much like like a Wiley e. Coyote drop down. Yeah, sort of. okay, yeah. I think maybe it's because I'm a comedian, and then you're like, this is a comedy film. Mm -hmm. I watch it with a certain like. Like, it, the, the, you're not going to make... This isn't going to be good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm like, no, nah, it's not... I need to be... Like, you need to put extra effort in. I don't know. I think it's maybe... It's just it's like a time... Like, I don't think there's any comedies that are funny before, like, a certain... But I can't think of, like, a film that I find, like, really funny before, like, a certain time. I don't know. What, what is your favourite comedy movie? 
I don't know if I have a favorite. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if I have a favorite. I think that like films of like very subtle I can't think of like a single film that I think is like a very actually you know what I really like Anchorman yeah I think Anchorman's a really good film and I think yeah. that this film is like a like Anchorman is like a better version of this like Anchorman mm -hmm. is this film but done correctly like really like weird bits in it yeah really weird like comedy and a lot like, of improvisation but it lands yeah but it lands I think that like the, yeah. for me is like very mm. episodic this movie is also sort of episodic, goes from one. Yeah, it's like nonsensical. There's like yeah. random celebrity cameos in the Anchorman. Like that's actually, I'd say like this film is like the Anchorman. Yeah. But like if the Anchorman was not made by Adam Kay and Will Ferrell, <laughs> it was made by like two people who just like it was an SNL. Did so you also like a, see Anchorman Two? Well, we don't we don't, we don't talk about Anchorman Two. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about Anchorman Two. I turned that off. Yeah, it's sad though, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. But that, that's the thing is like, like cult f comedy films. You yeah. can't just you can't just you can't just make more. No, you, you, you if you try to catch the same lightning in a bottle again, because you overthink it. Yeah, you overthink it. You go like, what do people like? Do we yeah. do something completely new? Oh, we it's did like, that joke, so we have to sort of recapture that, but not entirely. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, they never work. I can't think of a single comedy film that has. Like a sequel that's ever gone well. <laughs> Hello. Hey, mate. How you doing? <laughs> I keep forgetting that like there's like 40 people in an art gallery listening to this. And it uh, keeps hello, getting yeah. more and more. There are more and more people. It's almost as if they're interested. I think it's... Uh, do you think it's sort of something that the people of Utrecht will be like, so I went to this comedy gig <laughs> and the most unique thing about it is we saw the comedian and then after we went to an art gallery just below the gig and the same comedian was doing a podcast about the Blues Brothers and it was ext it was culturally significant, we feel. <laughs> <laughs> we felt like it, that was it, culture. It just got an hour to slag off the Blues Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. That's cool that you know the word slag off though. That's very <laughs> British. Did you look that up as well? <laughs> I didn't look it up. Okay, it's cool. just I've seen loads of English comedy. Oh yeah, what what comedy did you like from England? Well, um, uh, um, probably my favourite is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh yeah, cool, cool, nice, yeah. And the Martin Freeman one? No, no probably the, more yeah, the, yeah, no, I the yeah. Simon Jones. I one. suspected, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I used to watch loads and loads of uh, British comedy. Also, St Stuart Lee. Yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, um, Stuart, yeah. Um, I put you on the spot. I, 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 must, <laughs> I put you yeah, on the spot. But I must say that um, last few years I haven't been watching a shitload of English comedy. Father Ted was a big, big favourite. Yeah. And recently I've only seen Derry Girls. Derry Girls is great. It's good. Yeah. yeah it's, it's good perfect. stuff. Yeah. It's good really, stuff. really dug that. But yeah. just uh, for some reason. I'm busy doing. Yeah, other busy doing, like. doing, watching all the uh, <laughs> the, the um, Blues Brothers, the Blues with the Netherlands comedy shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah too many. Yeah. Are they good? There's, what's what's a good like um, Netherlands comedy show? Now that's, that's really a, putting me on the spot. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really that big a fan. I'm not really that big of a fan here. of the Dutch comedy shows. Okay, fine, I'm, cool. If I'm being honest, I like yeah. Dutch stand-up, but uh, less. Uh, okay, cool. The Dutch comedy on television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Loads of Dutch comedy shows on television are actually English shows, but then translated. Oh, into Dutch? Yeah. Yeah, okay. What, We've like, dub, loads like of dubbed that. over? Like, uh, what's it called? Uh, George and Mildred. We had a Dutch version of the, But more the the show that came... That's a, that it's a spin-off from. But like, I can't watch, the, three I can't kind watch dub stuff, though. Do you, I find I can't watch dub stuff. It's not like, even dubbed. It's like they put in Dutch actors and reenact. We've done. We've do also done a Dutch version of the Golden Girls, also American TV show. But well, they just they refilm it with. They Dutch refilm people. it with Dutch scripts, translated jokes. <laughs> it's That's so funny. weird. That's really funny. Yeah. That's quite funny. <laughs> Madness. Yeah, I can but, understand it, if you take a show like uh, Taskmaster and do it yeah. in the Netherlands with Dutch people. I find it's imagine if the show doesn't work. That's yeah. when it's depressing. It's like, oh no, it's just our, uh, it's just us. Yeah, it's like our, uh, <laughs> like, like you do like two, two out, two and a half men, and you're like, let's do a Dutch version of that, yeah. and it's like exactly the same, but it doesn't work. You're like, oh, it's just our culture. <laughs> like we just have a, a culture that's like bad. Yeah, they they've <laughs> like, tried for three times to do an American version of the of Faulty Towers, and each time oh, it yeah. failed. There's a oh, apparently it was crucial to have John Cleese do Yeah, yeah, it's almost 70s. as if he's like an extremely talented comedian. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, he used to be. Yeah. He's, 
He's a bit weird now. <laughs> he's, he's going to do new Faulty Towers. I'm sure... Is he going to do new Faulty Towers? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's been announced. Is he going to come out and do a... Because <laughs> you can't say anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. It's probably going to be that. Yeah. He's going to put more of the M word in the show. <laughs> yeah. He's like, actually, it wasn't enough using it once in the show. It's it's so tough to see uh, uh, some of my old heroes from. Yeah, it's tough, isn't Monty it? Python to watch now. the more all Monty Python guys. I, I think yeah. I think Eric Idle is still kind of all right. Yeah, I think Eric Idle's all right. And I think Terry Jones is very well off being dead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. John Cleese actually. He, I, he one time I was in a shop and he stood on my foot, yeah. and he didn't say anything. <laughs> How mad is that? Yeah. To, to you like you step on your f- foot, you yeah. at least go like. I'm you, sorry. you know he feels it. Yeah, you know, he's like fell. My, my like he's he was like he's tall. He's a big guy. Like, yeah. He crushed my foot, <laughs> and he didn't say anything. Wow. That's incre- incredible, right? <laughs> so I was like, uh, and then I, I knew from that point, this was back when he was okay. I was like, there's something wrong with this guy. You don't crush a man's foot and say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years ago, I was uh, in a student magazine. I was trying sort of hard when I found out that Terry Gilliam was coming to the Netherlands to get an interview with him. Oh, yeah. I just found no way to reach him. Yeah. Now I know. Uh, write to the distrib- st- distributor of his movie, and then you're probably sorted. But yeah, okay. I didn't know it back then. <laughs> Any other so, national treasures that have <laughs> let you sorry? down? Any other national treasures that you hate? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, if I read interviews with him now, I'm kind of glad that I didn't. Yeah, like, cool. Meeting yeah. your heroes is a very tough thing. Yeah, yeah. Like meeting me, man. I know you're <laughs> a big hero. I'm, I've been nothing but horrible. Yeah, man. I really I've been dug you all the in beer the, from the fridge. I really man. dug you in the last Jedi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let the past die. Yeah, Kill it if you have to. Yeah, I know. I, I, people think I'm an M driver. Yeah, they do. Yeah, people like genuinely. Like I, people like drunk people have approached me at bars and been like, it's so sick to meet you. <laughs> and then I have to do the voice. I'm like, I can do the <laughs> you voice. Have, you have to hang do on. very low Kermit. Yeah, I can do, um, hang on. Wait, um, what's, the, what's the line he does in the film trailer? Um, uh, I will show you the dark side. You know, <laughs> if you, you just talk like this and he's it's sort of like, you know, just Adam Driver like this. It's quite Adam nasally Driver. kind of voice. But I did that once, and then, like, an uh, actual woman on her, fo- on her 40th birthday, yeah. like, legitimately thought I was Adam Driver, and then she, like, tried to sleep with me. <laughs> but I was like, can you imagine how <laughs> how disappointing it would it be on your 40th birthday if in your head you managed to, like, sleep with Adam Driver and you wake up with a 22-year-old boy who works in a shoe shop? <laughs> like, how disappointing that would have been to be like, oh, God, like, I really, like should stop being alive. I think the 40, she, <laughs> she'd be like, 40 is like, <laughs> that's a good sign to like stop, <laughs> stop being alive. Um, so I, yeah, I, of course I didn't. Are you, are you ever afraid that you turn into a trap like that yourself when you're 40? Yeah, I'm afraid that Adam Driver will play me in the film <laughs> where I I kill everyone at a comedy. Like I like him in a comedy Adam show Driver and it's not going well. 20 years older than you. Yeah, but people don't care about that. Right, okay. <laughs> I mean, fa- oh, yeah, Hollywood famously cares about how old people look. It's like, yeah, <laughs> any high school scene in the Rule 36. You know, Toby Maguire yeah. in the Spider-Man is so funny. I think it's so funny that he's playing the Spider-Man. There's yeah. a scene in the beginning where, like, he's running up, and, you know, he's, he's like running after the bus. Yeah. Do you remember that? It's like the start of the movie, and they're like, <laughs> and they're like, they won't let him on the bus. And he's like, start the bar, start the bus. But I'm just like, this is a 32-year-old man tr- yeah. trying to get on a school bus. Do not stop the bus. <laughs> like, it's weird. And then he gets on the bus, and everyone on the bus is also 30 years old. Yeah. And you're like, what is happening? <laughs> and the teacher looks younger than all the pupils in the... In the it's it's bizarre. Watch If you watch the Spider-Man movie and you're like, really look at the characters here. They're all like 36. <laughs> and they're all playing like 17-year-olds. Very funny. And they all play like half their age. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Um, back to the Blues Brothers. Oh, no. Because why the fuck not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to get away from it. I can't think about that. I hate the film. Mm-hmm. Do people find it difficult to talk about the film? Or is like people are passionate about the film? Usually like people hate. are passionate about their hate for films. Oh, yeah, no. Like, you just I, stopped caring. No, because I do a podcast. I, I do my own show in which I watch really bad movies. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't watch mm-hmm. a bad movie every single week and keep all the memories. Because you, no, no, you won't last. Not. You won't survive. <laughs> like you go crazy. But do, do you? How long is the time between watching that movie and talking about it? Is well, the the so we what we at the same time we we comment as we're watching it. Okay. So it's like a thing we what do it as we watch. I would say that works. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh my so it's God. a watch along. This is like so bizarre. Yeah. So, so on the podcast right now, if you're listening and not watching the video, there is a guy, there's a photographer taking photos of me from behind you. So like I'm looking at you, but like yeah. past your head is like a photographer. And like, this is the most intrusive podcast. And now he's phone. behind me. Yeah. This is the most intrusive podcast I've ever come across. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> and I, this is someone who does a live podcast to like a live audience of people. This is the most intrusive it's ever been. <laughs> and I, I've never had this before my podcast either. So, so you've never had this. This is new for you as well. This is new for me as well. Yeah, okay. I didn't bring him along. You know what's weird? I did a gig yesterday in Antwerp. Yeah. And there was a guy, I was doing the gig, and there was a the photographer came, and he just got on the stage, and he just took photos of me just standing in front of me on the stage. And I just had to stop the gig and was like, what, you what do? the fuck you do, yeah. man? <laughs> just get off the stage. And he was taking loads of photos of me, and I was like, it's all of me talking yeah. yeah in the most like low energy voice you could ever imagine <laughs> like the first photo is going to be the same as the last photo and what he was the, there for yeah. 20 minutes like what's the upshot of him being on the stage with you when he's doing that and also because if you don't if you've never seen me before by the way on the podcast i perform with like i wear like a keyboard yeah i wear like a full-size keyboard yeah with like a with like a and it's like strapped so was he me. afraid that he couldn't reach over well the no it's, it's more that like if you take a photo of me and he's like on the stage with now an audience yeah it looks mental i look <laughs> i look insane I look like a children's entertainer that's been like out of work. <laughs> like on a stage, I look like I've paid for the venue, and I look like I've paid a photographer to take photos of yeah, me. And, and you, you have to include the audience, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> did it work? What, did, did, he, did he take photos? Well, when you when you started including the audience in on, he didn't include. I told them to go back to the. It was like, can you take a photo of me in context of an audience? And he just honestly just looked at me blankly, <laughs> and just carried on taking photos in a way. I sort of respected him <laughs> because it was just so because stoic. He, was, he just completely ignored me <laughs> like a stoic hero standing something there. that i would do if i was a photographer <laughs> Rosebud. so the I, i'm still going to try to get back to okay the movie. cool yeah go for it go and ask a question about the blues so, brothers so one of the one of the big scenes in the movie one of the ones i liked the most when i watched it first as a child was the one in uh the the the, the country bar yeah which, which scene is that? Remind me. They steal a gig of a band called The Good Old Boys by just turning up. Jake doesn't tell the band that he, they weren't booked there. Okay. It's immediately suspicious for the band, but they build up their stuff. And st uh, Jake introduced himself. Yeah, we're The Good Old Boys. Oh, yeah, old yeah. Boys, I, I do boy. remember this scene, yeah. And yeah. they start playing a, a, a blues song. Yeah. They get booed and they start thinking, what can we play that they might like? And um, they do the th theme song of Rawhide, <laughs> which is good. Okay, I'm not saying that this is the aren't good things, but I'm like, this isn't a joke. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm like I li I like live I like pay my bills with jokes. Okay, this is not a joke. This, you can't be like the f it's not going well, so we're just gonna like play a different song and then the song and then you're like that's well like that scene's over then like it's it, at least a joke when they ask the woman from the bar like oh what 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 music do you do you get here and she says oh we get both kinds country and western yeah okay that's okay that's a joke <laughs> cool um it's a bad joke <laughs> tell you what i could do if i did that on stage today yeah i'd have been met with nothing <laughs> yeah, but that's a completely different character. No, it's not. I argue this is a, it's the same thing. I'm the expert here. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same thing. You wouldn't need to be a country hick to. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel it is laughing at her. It's not a. It's it's to show what kind of a redneck she is and if what you kind of to, redneck bar it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I just don't think it's funny. It's my, I get the joke. I, I, I I'm just playing. Like, I can't understand the joke, but I'm just yeah. like it's not funny. Like I th I think it's hard to. And particularly if you like watch like n like more modern comedies i think it's hard to enjoy old comedies because mm. it's like what you do is you, when you write you're like i want to write something original every time so you're like i want to write something original yeah i want to write something new and original and something make this like better and more now, yeah. efficient mm. so by, by the time you get to like a comedy like now it the comedy is almost so subtle like i watched the um what's it called the um it's the, the 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 new comedy movie where they're on like a boat. They're like on a boat, and everyone's like, <sighs> "Triangle of Sadness." Yeah, Triangle of Sadness. 
that film was really funny, but mm -hmm. it's very subtle humor. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of like it's just like mannerisms mm -hmm. of the the actors. The actors do, do, do a really good job, and it's quite like they build an uncomfortableness that they just yeah. stretch out and oh, it's yeah. longer and longer and longer. But that's a result of of there being really obvious jokes that yeah. are like really too, like too played out. And when you see that and you go back like 20, 30 years, yeah. it's the same thing. It's like Blade Runner. Like if you watch Blade Runner now for the first time, you'd be like, this is fine. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, but at the time... It was revolutionary. It was, it was, yeah, like this, like no one had ever seen anything like this. But you're like, now you're like, that's just like The Mandalorian. <laughs> and you're like, no, <laughs> The Mandalorian is like, yeah, it's like... It's just it's riffing off. Yeah, yeah, so it's the same thing people, with yeah. with The Blues Brothers. I, can, I can't watch it and be like... I, I can't put myself in a frame frame. You're like, imagine how funny this would have been 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm not, I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was I going with this? There. You look defeated. You look. No, it looks, no, it looks, it looks like I've won. <laughs> is that is that what this is? Like uh, it looks like I've I've argued I don't believe so well. In, I don't believe in winners in my podcast. Otherwise, <laughs> we'd never win. <laughs> because <laughs> what film? What, what film has been like the most controversial? Been like mo most beloved film, and they're like it's not good. Uh, there, there have been a couple. Yeah. I've had uh, someone who tore down Parasite at the. Oh, height of its, uh, oh right when it would just come out but i think loads of people didn't work well, well people were like but it's cool to say it's not good <laughs> isn't it like it's cool to be like parasites really bad <laughs> is it yeah i think so i think it's cool to be like if the, everyone was like you've got to see this film you've got yeah. to see this film and you guys not good i recently had someone tear down triangle of sadness Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a great film. Oh, mm -hmm. well, not great. I thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like amazing. But I thought it was good. You mm -hmm. I think that you couldn't think that that was a bad film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it just came out. I'm still editing the Okay. I'll probably I'll listen to that episode and see what they got to say. But it's it's in Dutch, I'm sorry. Uh, well that's the problem then. Yeah. You've not got the original. <laughs> but how many people judge people speak English? Uh, I think about 1 in 5. Really? Okay. In the podcast, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I. It's cool. That I'm let's getting, see like, which one ones I had, which were. Let's see which ones I had, which were in English. Um, I've had Greece, but that I was the one who didn't like that. Oh, okay, you didn't like Greece. No. Uh, I never. Not into it. No. The bullies are the heroes. I. Yeah. Okay. I get it. It's not my thing. Yeah. Um, John Travolta's all right though. He's okay. And Olivia Newton-John. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're solid. Uh, which ones did I have? Deadpool, Stephen. I was I, just. I, I was just MC at your show. He he uh, did Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. He hates Deadpool. I was. I you know. I recently watched the. It's really weird. I was watching the World Cup, the England game. Yeah. And randomly, I was doing a gig in like a hotel. Yeah. For like celebrities. Yeah. Like it's a celebrity like hotel they all come there for like a retreat and i ended up watching the england game with a bad guy from deadpool who's ed screen yeah and he was just watching it and he was alone and we were watching it yeah. and we were talking <laughs> and we were just like talking it was like really bizarre and then he came to the gig mm -hmm. afterwards and it was like a really bad gig as you'd imagine and in a celebrity i was just pour into celebrities yeah like 20 celebrities in a room after England had just lost the World Cup, yeah, right? and um, is it really people who are performers and yeah, yeah, and watch it on a sort of yeah. meta level, yeah, 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 and it was it was like he's a really nice guy, yeah, I love that, and then I'm apparently I'm friends with Ed Screen. He plays good bad guys, but I imagine that he would be a yeah. nice hang. He was a lovely, a lovely hang. He's a very nice guy. Um, I didn't say that I hated Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you hate Deadpool? I didn't. Uh, Stephen did. Oh, you okay? Fine. Hmm. I think it's. A, I I don't know if I hated Deadpool. I don't, can't decide whether I hate Deadpool or not. <laughs> I liked this film, that Alita. I told him that I liked Alita. Alita was a good movie. Ah, didn't see that one yet. You know, Alita: Battle Angel. Yeah, it's really good. Check okay. it out. It's really fun. Check it out. Improvement does you. So, if you would have to name stuff to improve, the Blues Brothers. Yeah. What would you say? Three hours shorter. Um, <laughs> so that would take, put it the lo yeah. the the long version to no, minus thirty minutes. Ser seriously, just make the joke shorter. Yeah, make the joke shorter. Get the all the tension stuff. Get it out. Mm -hmm. Get a film. Don't tell Aretha Franklin to get back in the kitchen. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't no. like that at all. Um, I'd say like, uh, I did honestly. Just make it shorter. 
just just every scene needs to just calm down. I, 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 honestly, I could I'm, make I'm a going, version. I'm going to say something that's going to add insult to injury for you. Okay. When Dan Aykroyd wrote the first script, it was really, really thick, like 300 something pages. And he actually put it in in the in a cover of Yellow Pages as a joke, like look how much I've written. Yeah. And then uh, John Landis had to work at just cutting stuff out <laughs> to make it into a movie. That goes to show how poor as a joke smith Dan Aykroyd is. <laughs> that he can be like, look how look how big it is. I put it in the Yellow Pages, and it was like, oh, good joke. And it's like, no, that's literally how big it is. Yeah. That's not a good joke. That's irresponsible friendship <laughs> that's a bad working relationship <laughs> to be like look how funny it would be if it was this big yeah <laughs> and then you go no it's actually that big fuck you D- have you seen other stuff by dan Aykroyd? like is it ghostbusters ghostbusters well? yeah i think ghostbusters is fine yeah i think it's fine i think it's bad it's fine it's just fine yeah, it's fine have you seen the new ghostbusters which one <laughs> afterlife no it's because I, why would i watch that if i thought the original one was fine and the uh, female one the paul feig paul feig one not watched it no 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 interest because i've not i don't i don't really like the first one so like uh, i think if the if the first one is the best one yeah why would i watch the rest <laughs> do you know what i mean like i'm not gonna be like i'm not gonna like start enjoying it paul feig's like paul feig's one or like or the but the, that the at least is one. a remake so it's a new but I don't know anything universe. about. I don't know whether it's a remake or it's you like just a sequel. Care. I just like I'm just like whatever. If it has the name Ghostbusters, how good is it? But it takes be? me so much to go to the to go watch a film. You know, like it's like the way that that's, that's the way it is now. Like you watch Netflix. If you don't like the film within 20 seconds, you're like, I want to find a new film. <laughs> so what you basically want is just to be tickled as soon as possible with jokes that you like. Well, if it's a, if it's a comedy film specifically, yeah. like if it's a comedy film, like if it's not fun in the first five minutes, I'm like not gonna wait. I think it's interesting that you like Triangle of Sadness because it's also two and a half hours long. But I think that the first scene is very funny. Yeah. I think the opening scene where there's like, um, they're doing the poses and they're like, yeah. I think that scene is hilarious. That already helps. And yeah, then you and have like, the, the discussion about the bill. Yeah, I think that that's funny as well. I think those scenes are very funny. Hmm. But I, and so I can like trust the film. Yeah. Because it's a, because it's a, it's a, it's a, com- it's like a, co- it's like a dark comedy. Yeah. So like, if it's funny in the first five minutes, then I'll be like, if it's not funny for like another 10 minutes, I can trust the film mm-hmm. because they've, they've already made me laugh. Right. But like if I'm watching the film and it's like the first 20 minutes is not good, like I can't, I can't like, I just can't do the rest. And I had to because it's four articles. Blues Brothers takes its time because it starts off with first just a couple of images of like industry of Chicago before it even gets to yeah. the prison. And you have a very long walk from the jail cell yeah. to even... Frank Oz, who yeah. does get the first funny line in the movie. <laughs> it's so long in. Yeah. It's so long in. Try and think of a comedy film that you like that mm-hmm. it takes like it's not funny immediately. You won't think of a single one. Try it like it, you have to be funny in the first five minutes. Otherwise, you just like not. You just lost it. I don't think uh, Nebraska is very funny immediately, but I really do like that. But it's okay. also it does start with a weird premise, like an old man hanging about the side of the road, and then a policeman comes to pick him up. Okay, that's very funny. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Bruce Dern, funny, so yeah. that helps. Yeah. All right. So um, I also asked you if you have three movie recommendations for well, the three listeners. movie recommendations. Have you thought of any? I don't know. The films that I like are like people. I feel like they're all films people have heard of. Could be, but that doesn't matter. Tip one. I like Whip- Whiplash. Is such a good movie. Yeah. I think Whiplash is amazing. Why? I just think it's like a thriller, but it's not about. But it's about drumming. Mm-hmm. So those are things I like, like music and thrillers. But it's like not a typical thriller. No, it gets you to so the edge great. of your seat. Uh, sorry. It gets you to the edge of your yeah, seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, I really like the fact that like they learn the, they were like they learned the dr- like the guy learned the drums. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. I think I really respect that he learned the drums. And J.K. Simmons movie. is a manus. Yeah, he's great, and he got the Oscar. It's great, great film. What else? I, I should have thought of this because I saw. I remember seeing this. You told yeah. me to do this, but then I was like, I'll just think of it on the. I completely forgot. Yeah, I just think of it on the fly. It's fine. I, have you seen the new movie by uh, Jamie and Chazelle who made Whiplash, uh, Babylon? No, I've not seen it, but there's, I've seen some sequences from it, and it looks really good. All right. Yeah, I've seen like a few. They've released a few sequences, and it looks really. It looks amazing. What else? What films do I like? I like. Tip two. The Sound of Music. 
check out the sound. If you've not seen the sound, of, I don't know if everyone's seen it because like a lot of people I talk to, but like have not seen the sound of music. I think it's a music- wonderful recommendation because I really didn't expect it. No, the sound of music is such a good movie. I love, I've watched it like a hundred mm-hmm. times, like a hundred times. I only watched it for the first time, I think, two years ago around Christmas. Yeah, it's amazing. If you've not seen it, like watch the sound. It's really long, and it's so long it has an interval. <laughs> There's like a bit in the middle where it's like go, go. It's like they literally the film stops. And it's like go take a big piss. Yeah, it used to be a thing back then. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, What's your favorite song? Um, that I like them all equally. Gen- genuinely, like I think it's like a perfect film. Okay, it's great. I think it's so good. Um, I like Adel Adel Edelweiss is like a classic. The one. Where the, the, hey, where, uh, yeah, that's a really good one. Mm-hmm. I love that song, but they're all good. <laughs> all right. There's no bad song apart from the one where he's like, You are 15, uh, 16 Go, going, going on, on 17. So. That's a bit of like a, I don't know, I, I'm trying to figure, like, because I love the movie so much, but that bit happens and I'm like, Is he like trying to, <laughs> what's he, what's he, what's his plan here? Yeah. He's basically like saying, like, You're like, you're, you're, lot, he's like, the point of the song is like, You're not old enough to like, know what to do so like let me tell you what to do and, you, and you're like well don't like where this is going <laughs> don't like where this is going what are you what are you saying man and then it's like and then he turns out to be a nazi and you're like yeah okay john um, mulaney actually did a, a spoof of that in uh, i think it was snl oh right okay. where they first go 16 going on 17 and the joke becomes that the guy says i am 39 going on 40. <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah 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 it just becomes hella creepy <laughs> yeah it's hella creepy as it is you don't need to put that john you need to leave it alone john it's creepy as it is <laughs> Um, but it is a movie about all the yeah. men liking young women. Yeah. I'm going to try and think of the third movie that I like that no one else really likes um, that you like to recommend. Um, you're the first one to recommend Sound of Music, so you're doing well. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, what else would I recommend? Hang on. You can edit this in the podcast. Yeah. But I think... Let's see if I've got... Because I think I was so bored in lockdown that I wrote down films that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Um, let's have a look. I like. Oh, you, tip three. The raid two. Yeah. The raid two is so good. All the raid, the raid two, or the raids. I think they're they're, they're so like they're Indone- they're like action films. Mm-hmm. They're Indonesian uh, sort of films made by a Welsh man. And yeah. I'm Indonesian Welsh, so okay. it's like it's like pretty cool for me. But yeah. I watched that film. I watched the Raid One and the Raid Two, and they're like yeah. the best action films of all time. And they're just like a lot of fun. There's not a lot of plot in them, but no, like, well, no, they, the, the martial arts are insane. Like yeah. it's you're watching it. I remember watching it in the cinema. I actually took a Chinese takeaway into the cinema because I knew <laughs> no one would be there to watch this like Indonesian <laughs> film. I took a full uh, Chinese takeaway in, and me and my friend were eating Chinese takeaway watching this film in the cinema, and we were just like. We were like yelling. It was so good. It was so it's such so, a stupid, like crazy action film. It's filmed so well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the the the, the Raid Two is more of a story, and yeah. it's good. But I think the Raid One is maybe better for yeah. me because I think it's just pure action movie and it's like less of a plot. They're just like we're just really good at. It's it's so simple and as a premise, yeah. like a couple of policemen go into a building they start shooting around at, at criminals and once the, yeah, the, a, the once the the guns are empty they start fighting yeah like there's a main guy the bad guy on the top floor that's exactly. to the top floor yeah that's the whole film but it's like it's like it's masterful like you watch it and it's like mesmerizing the mm. the, the the stunts that the the that like the, the actors or the stuntmen do are yeah. just cra- are crazy. And the the main guy Udo Iwais, he's really good. He's yeah, in he's so good. other movies, yeah, but yeah. he's very he good. He was in, in Star the- Wars, and they made yeah. him shoot a gun. Yeah. <laughs> it's this, like because I, I heard he was in the movie. You can see yeah. him in in the Force Awakens. He shoots. He's like, and also the other guy who's in the Raid Two, he's also in it. Yeah, and they put them in the film, and they're yeah. like shooting laser guns, and they're in it for like five seconds. I'm like, what is the what's the point? Yeah. Getting these guys in from Indonesia to shoot a laser gun. At least two bad guys from uh, from the raid were in uh, uh, John Wick Three, and at least they got to fight. Oh, in John Wick Three? Yeah. I didn't see that movie. They they had to lose from uh, okay. fr- uh, Keanu Reeves. Of course. Oh, Keanu Reeves beats them up. Well, not really. Okay, They're obviously fine. better they fighters, shoot him in the head. but at some point he shoots they, them in the head. No, not even that. Okay, fine. they get away. I watched the film. I've not seen John Wick Three. No, but it's it's a good fight scene. Okay, cool. All right. So, all right. I think that's it. Thank you so much. That's having me. 
Did you enjoy not talking about the Blues Brothers? I actually enjoyed everything about uh, not talking about the Blues. I, everything apart from the Blues. Like, because I had to relive the... Because I was watching, I was just like... I had to relive the memory of this terrible experience where I had to watch this film. <laughs> if you want to see my full thoughts on it, you can check out the article I wrote. You just have to type in Huge Davies Blue Brothers, yeah. and then I've got like a full article about it. I'll definitely it. put a link in the description. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, but, yeah. But thanks, thanks so much for on. doing I've, this, I've man. enjoyed, I've enjoyed talking. I like talking about, I like films, so I like talking about films, so this has been fun. Cool. Thanks Cheers. for having me. Thanks. And thanks to all the, everyone's gone. We just looked, as soon as we've said that everyone's gone from the yeah. exhibition. <laughs> we've emptied the room. Emptied the room. <laughs> but they were here for, like, I, I will say, they were here for a lot of it. Yeah. Oh, wait, can the ca are the cameras filming the people out there? No, I'm not sure. No, there's a few shots. Uh, a few okay. shots. <laughs> there, were, there were hundreds of people out Once there we listening. It, it's yeah, because you were dressed. Yeah, yeah. There's a hundred. Pe there's a hundred people out there. A hundred people. Um, cool. Cool. All right. Cheers. Thanks very much for having me, man. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for doing this. No worries. And so we fought and we battled. Yes, we beat each other up. Both of us tried hard. We both failed. Yes, I had you by the thumb. think is that thanks so much again to huge davies for joining in this fun i had a lot of fun in our conversation in the weird art gallery also many thanks to Menno the meester who recorded our session at uh, studio pandora at tivoli vredeburg and also a lot of thanks to the utrecht international comedy festival who gave us access to the big binge of comedy to make this live podcast possible all right. Are there any films that I saw uh, in the recent weeks that I can recommend? Of course, there was Inuo, the new film by Masaki Yuasa, a lovely anime and one of the, well, um, very few films lately that I've seen that just feels like you had to ride a wave and just coast off it. Um, it is a rock opera. It's set in Japan in the, in the 14th century. And it's a weird little story with weird animation, and it is awesome. Um, there is a very special screening of it on the Kaboom Animation Festival, which takes place very quickly in Utrecht and Amsterdam. So go visit it. It's, it's, a, it's a great movie. Also, do I really need to recommend Tar? Well, I saw it. I saw it twice. It kind of took two times to really digest it, but I really loved it. Film by Todd Field. Didn't win the Oscars, but I think it's one of those where in 10 years that will say it's ridiculous it didn't win anything. All right, so this was a cinema production presented and edited by me, Ruud, the 20th Eeuwse Vos. Um, also recorded by Menno de Meester, of course, like I said before. And uh, the jingles are by the genius, that is, Roy Grutters. This podcast was also made possible by my patrons, Casey the Great, Onno Lubbers, Martijn van Kolwijk, The Holy Saint Neil Stimmer, and of course, Mike van Dooyeweert. Um, if you want to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash uh, where you can find everything about how and why. Um, you can also find us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and of course on Instagram. And of course, most naturally on Letterboxd. Let's not forget that one. And also, if you want to send me any type of complaints, please type it up in a very nice little hate mail and send it to duimpjewoslen at gmail.com. Dot com. Dot com. Punt com. Anyway, see you again. Well... You'll hear from me again in a fortnight. Enjoy yourselves and, of course, 
Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, could we have an enormous round of applause, please, for our host, who has once again succeeded in bringing to us a plethora of top notch, cinematographically themed entertainment. We have had an absolute ball, have we not? Next time on Thumb Wrestling. Het aardige vind ik, is een van de aardige punten uh, waarom je echt een keer naar Krul moet kijken, is ook als een manier waarop een regisseur heeft geprobeerd om dat, ja, dat, dat menggebied tussen fantasy en science fiction... wat je in literatuur natuurlijk al veel meer mm-hmm. uh, zag... om dat eens in beeld te vangen. This podcast employs a strict only like and subscribe... if you really want to policy. Oké, okay, bye.